Jonesboro is a beautiful town in East Tennessee, founded in the late 1700s. Known for its scenic splendor and rich architectural history, Jonesboro also has a robust tourist trade that brings in thousands of visitors worldwide. But amid the idyllic scenery, there lies a hidden truth that most people visiting might not even realize. It's also a hotbed for paranormal activity. In the center of Jonesboro, Rob Phillips and Kathy Dubay Shepard operate a business called Paranormal Technology Investigations. Their combined 28 years of investigating the paranormal has helped countless number of families put their shattered lives back together after experiencing horrifying haunting activities. Their case files have been told on radio programs, written about in newspaper and books, and portrayed on a national TV channel's Destination America show, A Haunting. Tonight on Paranormal Mysteries Uncovered, Rob, Kathy, and the PTI team gather together to discuss one of their cases and how paranormal technology investigations help put a local family's shattered lives back together. Thank you for joining us. This is Paranormal Mysteries Uncovered. It's the case files of Paranormal Technology Investigations. My name is Mark Griffith, and with us today we have Rob Phillips, who is owner, Kathy Dubay Shepard, who is owner, and with us lead investigator, Tanya Patrick Kennard. In 2015, going back to one of our cases, there was a Destination America had a show, a haunting called Bewitched and it used our case file that was done in 2015. We're gonna discuss that case today in detail. The docudrama that Destination America did was great, but there was some behind the scenes information that would you find interesting, and we thought we'd share it with you today. And Rob, why don't you start us off by describing what this case was about. Well, the mother and the son had lived in the same home together. They lived upstairs, and the grandmother of her mother and his grandmother actually lived downstairs and he started dating this young girl well actually she was about a year older than he was and the girl that he was dating had a friend that didn't like him I mean she just didn't like the guy at all and she kept trying to get him get her to break up with him and she kept telling her no I'm not gonna break up with him and you know that's final and she told him she said well then I'll make sure that you two are not together. She said, I'm a, I'm a practicing black witch and I'll make sure you two are not together. And then they were uh, laying around the house watching TV one day and he was laying on the bed with the mattress, a mattress on the floor. And just out of nothing, he just, his legs went up, he was levitated and drug across the living room floor. And she started screaming for somebody to help and three or four people came up and it took them to get him basically back down onto the floor and by the time all this happened he completely blacked out his eyes we were told were just black onyx and he went crazy and started attacking everybody and again it took three or four of them to hold him down and they uh from there things just kind of escalated and at what point did you get involved with your team about right then. They uh, contacted us, and what I mean by they is the 911 dispatcher. The law was actually called out several times for different things, which we'll get into that. But the law was called out, and the woman's sister was actually a 911 dispatcher. And a local detective for the sheriff's department had her contact us because she was seeking out somebody to help them. And when we uh, spoke with her on the phone, she started going over some of the activity that they were already experiencing. And when we went to do the investigation, we had to go to the hospital to meet the mother because whatever this witch done, she caused a lot of, lot of uh, issues with this family and it almost killed the mother and it put her in ICU for two weeks. So we had to go to the hospital to meet her to get the interview. And while we were there, we had prayed for her. And that from that night there, we went straight to the investigation. 
So at the time, let me say if I understand this, did they know that they were being attacked by some incantation or some? At this, at later on, before before they contacted us, they the uh, boy's girlfriend told them that about her friend who was a witch and what she said she was going to do, and what was uh, made it even worse was this girl and three or four of her friends went to their house, his father's house, and I think someone else's house, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, it was the wrong it was the grandmother downstairs and asked for him by name and they would tell the, the son, the one that was levitated, they asked for him by name and they said uh, uh, no he is not here. Why? They said because we're we're coming to take him away and when we get him you will never see him again. And that's basically right then when the law was called and then we were contacted. So they, they knew, uh, they had an idea that this might possibly be the reason they're experiencing activity because nothing had ever happened to them in the past before other than her father passed away upstairs while he was working on the home. And they had a little uh, uh, activity that they believed was her father. So have you ever before investigated where you thought there was a, a witch curse on a on a home uh, is this a first it well, would seem somewhat rare as far as a witch maybe uh, well i'm investigating cases where things were done like satanic rituals and things like that things were conjured up thinking they're conjuring up a dead friend and summons a demon but this is an entirely different thing, so I'd say, yeah, probably the first with the witch. And at what point were you invited into their home to discuss how you would go to about um, helping them? Well, when they contacted us, when we went to the hospital to speak to them, that was the night we were going to the investigation. And we just basically from there explained to them how, how we go about doing things. You know, we promised them we'd do everything that we can to help them. We, um, um, spoke with the mother. I mean, she was basically just in tears the entire time. And you could tell when somebody was lying about something or they're just wanting attention, trying to get on TV, because we've got different episodes out on uh, a haunting, and a lot of times you get people that just want to be on the, the network or the show. But this woman was very sincere. I mean, she was just tears the entire time. And when we went to talk to her, we, and after we prayed for her, we told him, I said, we told her that we're leaving to go to their, to their house right now to do this investigation. Kathy, when you met with them, what was your impressions of the family and what was occurring, some of their claims? What was your initial impression of that? First time I met him, it was in the hospital. It was uh, the mother and her sister and her sister's husband, it was all there. And they were all just, uh, sincere about their story. The mother was crying and uh, we just knew we needed to get over there and do what we could in their home to help. Her son, he wasn't there. Uh, I can't remember, he was in the home? He was in a home before. with his girlfriend. Okay, <clears throat> right. But uh, yeah, that was the impression I got was that it was, it was real. Something, something was going on like that. So the decision was made by, by them to have you come into the home and start an investigation and you picked a, a, a date that was convenient for them? Which was basically that night, I believe, wasn't it? The yeah. same night. Yeah, the same, same night. night. You started. Yeah, we felt like that, you know, we had other cases that was lined up, but we felt that the level of this haunting and the dangers that this putting this family in that we needed to bump them up on the list and go ahead and immediately start the investigation because as you'll see throughout the uh, throughout the story here that this demon was trying to kill somebody in that home and that's one reason why she was in the hospital. How many times did you go into the home to investigate? Was it just that one evening or did you go back for subsequent we went, investigations? Was it two or three times? We went twice, uh, two or three times. I know the first time we were there. I think it was four. Was it four? I think it was four. I believe it was two. Okay. We went, I guess, four times. Um, Tiny, give me your perspective of uh, the night that the, uh, were you there for the first night? Yes. 
So tell me what your feelings were when you went into the home and you heard the story. What what went through your mind? Um, well, I mean, I was with them when we went to the hospital, so, you know, I got to see the mom's reaction and, you know, her being in tears and hearing the sister and the brother-in-law corroborate her story. I knew she was genuine. Um, you know, I mean, like Rob said, you can usually tell when somebody's trying to play a game. Pull the wool over your eyes. Yeah, so to speak, yeah. Um, but we knew she was genuine. I mean, she was in the hospital, so it was pretty serious. So when we went in that night, um, we did like a normal investigation. Um, we heard some uh, some things going on in the back room. Um, you know, we sent one of the investigators to go back and, and check things out, but we couldn't find anything, you know. Um, at that time, I mean, I didn't really feel anything dark or anything like that, but there were some things that went on with the son um, during the investigation, you know, like him being scratched while we were sitting right there watching him. Uh, and I, you know, I started taking photos, consecutive photos, and we got something in one of the photos that couldn't really explain. Like a shadow? A shadow in one of the pictures, yeah, and it was in the middle of the, the photos. Um, it wasn't like in the beginning, you know, you, you rule out things like your thumb being in the way or, you know, the, the camera strap or whatever. Uh, you rule those things out, um, and that's what we did, and so that photo was something that we couldn't explain. Some of the scratches that he got while we were there, he was sitting on the couch, but he was getting scratched, and so we couldn't explain that. So things were going on. I didn't really feel anything personally like anything evil, but um, at the same time, things were going on to him that... We try to explain. Yeah. So where did you go from there? Uh, from that night after the investigation ended, um, did you collect evidence in addition to the scratching and the shadows and, and those well, things that are going on? the night of the, of the investigation, after we had finished that night, I mean, during the investigation, we were uh, hearing different noises moving throughout the house. I mean, you could hear things basically on cue moving when you would ask it to. We, we um, uh, didn't realize how much we had captured until after the investigation when we started analyzing the evidence and started noticing we picked up a lot of different things. We have uh, audio from the Hi8 cameras that we was running. No, actually it was a Hi8, it was wireless, that uh, you can't explain. We, we have no way of explaining where these voices came from. Could you make out the voices from the Hi8? Most of it you could. There was one that said, um, and it was a real raspy voice that said, won't you come over here? Which would have been in the kitchen area. The, the camera was stationed in the kitchen area, but it was faced, facing the living room because it was the open plan from the kitchen to the living room. So we had the camera sitting there facing where we were located. And from behind the camera, you can hear that raspy voice say, won't you come over here? And uh, it, was, it was every time on that same camera at another point, we heard uh, help them, which the woman that lives there later said that it sounded like her father's voice, and she felt like maybe it was her father, and he knew what was going on, and he knew that we were there to try to do something to help them, and he was asking us to help them. And then there was another point, you, you hear something that we can't really make out what it's saying. Okay, so that was the end of the first night. So you had subsequent um, investigations. What was the level of activity in the home after the first investigation? Did it seem to subside? Did it increase? Do you remember them speaking to you about that? They're not getting increased. There was, um, we had, uh, I think it was during the second investigation. Um, what am I gonna do with that? Kathy and Tanya tell that one because I was actually in a different room when this happened, but we did capture it on video. Oh, the door. <laughs> yeah, the door. Actually, I think Tanya, we were sitting on the couch in the living room doing a silent session. Rob was in the back, and I was looking over this way, away from the door, and then I guess Tanya was looking toward the door, and I felt something grab my leg and hollered, Kathy. Is that you? That was me. That, really that was. wasn't a spirit. So. That was me. Well, it was Tanya. And the door had come open 
and it's like it started to shut back, like something opened it, seen us sitting there and decided, okay, now's not the time to come in, I'm gonna go back out. And it slammed and, it shut. Uh, it slammed it shut. But what they didn't show on film or on this episode, Bewitched, what they didn't show was the hallway door actually later on in the evening. It Open did the same the thing. Yes. Did you capture that on video? We didn't. Not but that. you you witnessed this yourself. Yeah. Yeah. How often have you had investigations where you witnessed a door opening and closing on its own? Uh, that wasn't my first one. It wasn't your first one? So this is we've experienced one before. One before, but it's not often that this occurs. No, it's not something that occurs every time you investigate. So what was uh, what was going through your mind when you saw the door open and close? Grabbed her leg and I, I said, "Oh crap!" Pretty much. And it wasn't in the first place. She grabbed it. She was, yeah. <laughs> no, I wanted fearful. to run out the door. It kind of freaked me out because you don't get that stuff a lot, you know. And when you've been there a few hours and it's really quiet and nothing's happened within the last say 30 minutes to an hour, something like that happens, it catches you off guard, you know? See? And I think you were screaming for Rob, both of Yeah, you. we're like, Rob, get in here, Rob, come on. Yeah, because we had the camcorder and we yeah. had it filmed and he had, uh, had all that going. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, we're, when we opened the door, when we went, I brought the uh, camera in, which was in the night vision, and immediately started checking the doors yeah. and outside the door, there was nothing or nobody out there. Now, if the door would have just opened, whatever. But when it opens and then it two seconds later shuts and slams shut. Well, and, and also, and you couldn't see this from from what we had online, but um, the way the the living room is set up, like here's a big window right here, and here's the door, so you can see who's coming and going. Exactly. Nobody came and went. <laughs> Nobody. It wasn't a windy night. Um, and so you know, we tried to go through all these different scenarios of why a door would open and close by itself. Um, and we couldn't come up with anything. So you couldn't debunk it, so you just, you knew that you had captured a piece of evidence that is well, when, somewhat rare. Here's yeah. what happens when we capture something like that. We don't guarantee that it's paranormal. We do say that this is possibly paranormal activity. We feel that it is. What's your opinion on it? Yeah. And that's basically how we go <clears throat> about it. It's like uh, when we were talking a moment ago about capturing the audio off the um, wireless cameras. There was at one point we captured uh, a singing, a girl singing, uh, the voice of her, and figured out later on now that was debunked. We, it was one of the, uh, it was the boy's girlfriend who was singing, so that was debunked. So, and that's what we try to do. We try to debunk every single thing that we capture. We don't want to just every everything that happened to start blaming it on. Spirits, you know, and that's why we named this show Paranormal Mysteries Uncovered because uncovered part is uncovering right. something that is debunked. Right. So, but there was other things that occurred in that house that night. I remember, and you'll see the video in just a moment. But Kathy, you were investigating and looking into the kitchen, and uh, something occurred. Can you explain to everybody what that was? Right. Um, I was standing behind the couch. The couch was was. Uh, near the kitchen and I was behind it looking into the kitchen area. Tanya was beside of us almost in sitting next to the bathroom door and I noticed that she kept turning her head looking and she was listening to something. So I kind of scooted on over there more and was listening and I could hear something but it sounded like something was moving from the kitchen into the bathroom area. Um, then all of a sudden you hear and we had a bag sitting in there, it was full of equipment. And it sounded like somebody just picked it up and slammed it down on the floor. It's pretty yeah, loud it on loud. the video. Very loud. I mean, it sounded yeah. like, to me, it sounded like pots and pans or something like crashing. You go in there and you don't see anything Nothing's out of place. place. Right. The only thing there was the bag. What was that? Are you in there? 
in the kitchen. Is that you making all that racket in here? something to have that type of energy to pick something up and make that type of noise it had to have some power from somewhere because spirits have to have energy to do anything and it's just like us we need our energy we need our food to give us our energy our cars need gasoline you know they have to have energy and for something to pick something up that whatever it was that picked up if it was that bag and as loud as it happened it kind of told me that whatever was in there was powerful. And uh, during this investigation also, your sister, Jerry Patrick, was also investigating with you. Right. And at one point, she starts making a motion about she's hearing whispers and whispers and this and that mm -hmm. and the other thing. Um, we'll show that piece in, in the video. But what was that about? Because there, there was something <laughs> to that. It's like I'm hearing little whispers. Little, you know, just whispers. Can't make them out, but there's little whispers Back everywhere. Forth. Yeah, everywhere in this room. Okay. There was, here's what the situation was. There was a demon that we discovered. His name was Don Talion. How did you learn his name? Well, it was given to the boy that lived there, the, little, her, her, the woman's son. Uh, it appeared to him. He was outside and it appeared to him and it told him, he said, I will be back, but when I come back, it will not be for you, but it will, it will be for death. And that's basically when, about a week later, his mother got put in the hospital with clogged arteries. And it was due to her being strangulated, I think. But, and she's not in bad shape, so she, no, she was, she very, was healthy. very healthy. And now she has a uh, tumor on her brain, so whatever it was, basically, still trying to fight with her but as far as all the activity it's settled down but when I researched the demon's name of Don Talion Don Talion Don Talion the only thing I could pretty much find on it was Dante who was a powerful demon that was over many in other words over other many demons and he was um, very dangerous and um, he would death was basically in his plans. Now these voices that Jerry heard, did you hear those whispers during that investigation at no, that time? I didn't hear the whispers. I was sitting right beside her too. Um, but what had happened was Sydney, uh, the boy, he uh, he had said this, this thing, this entity or whatever, uh, was telling him to meet him at the cemetery. Um, and this was he, audible? It, well, to him it was, okay. <laughs> not to us. All right. um, but this thing was telling Sydney to go to the cemetery, um, and it was a whisper to him. Well, my sister said, well, she heard whispering, and they were sitting kind of close in proximity. Um, but that's where the whispering came from. Did Jerry think she she was hearing go to the cemetery as well? She could say she couldn't make it yeah, out. Yeah, she couldn't make it out, but she had heard it. She had been hearing it for a few minutes, but she didn't say anything. And then Sydney speaks up and okay. says this, and that's when she says, well, I've actually been hearing some whispering, but I don't know what it's saying. That's when he said, well, he said to you that whatever this is wants you and another person to meet him at the unmarked grave. Yard. Yeah. Unmarked grave yard. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, we're going to find out a couple things first. And, and he, he told me, he said, uh, the demons want you to go to the cemetery, meet him out there alone. And then when Jerry spoke up and said that she was hearing the whispering, he told us that uh, the demon told him that now he's wanting Jerry to go also. So whatever his plan was. And at the cemetery... So you and Jerry went to the cemetery? We went to the cemetery. That's and, right behind the house. Up, up, kind of up from it a little bit. Um, we did discover, and we all kind of went up there, we did discover that 
there had been some type of a ritual held in the graveyard up there. They were uh, remnants of different things. You see burnt candle wax on the ground and the headstones and different things as if somebody was up there performing a ritual. Did you tell me one time that a police officer confirmed that there was rituals being yes. done in that? So there was confirmation yes. from law enforcement agencies. So, well, we, exactly, and the law enforcement, we were helping them and they were helping us. We were trying to figure, figure everything out, put two and two together. We had permission. Uh, every time we would go, anytime we go anywhere else to investigate, we always contact the local law enforcement, let them know where we're at and what we're doing. Safety. But in this case, they were basically watching to protect us because they knew the situation to what was going on because when these witches was going to their houses trying to find him, take him off, do whatever, the law was called and they were wanting to find these people and find out what was going on. So they were trying to protect us and the family at the same time. We went to the cemetery one night. This is the night that we felt the same night investigation. We found the remnants of the uh, uh, candle wax and all of this. Um, a neighbor had pulled up and it got ugly. He started screaming and yelling at us, busting at us. I guess he assumed that uh, we're a paranormal team, God forbid, we're a paranormal team, we're, we're the evil ones. But he, he had no idea that we're not about that. We're about helping these families and helping people. That's why we're in this field. That we're up there trying to figure this case out and solve it for his family. But he thought we were up there to perform a ritual. And it kind of got him offensive, offended by it because it's not what we're about. Right. Well, so he, he said right. he's going to call the law. I said, well, go ahead. I want you to. And when the law got there, the cop, the police officer explained to him, uh, sir, they have permission to be here uh, probably more than you do. You know, this is your property, basically. They have permission to be here and they know what they're doing and, and their situations going on that they're trying to help take care of. So uh, were there any other um, active spots during the investigation? You did four. We talked about most of the um, things that you discovered during that period of time. Was there anything else that you wanted to add to that? Well, I don't know if we ever debunked it or not, but during one of the investigations, you can see a shadow figure, maybe twice, that moves across somebody. Now, I don't know. I, if that was ever debunked or not, I can't remember. No, no, I know the ones that I saw, they were more, because I would sit away from the group. That's what I usually do is I sit away from the group and see what I can get. But I know the ones that I saw, they were kind of like black wisps, but not like humanoid shapes or anything like that. But I couldn't figure out what those were. Kind of like just a shadow yeah, going through. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Didn't know if it was the IR part of the camera kicking in or off. Well, the IR stays on all the time. So it wouldn't be that. Right, it right. wouldn't kick off. Okay. We had manually cut it off. And if that happened, then it would go from green to basically blackout. You wouldn't see nothing. But right, and, and you, once you're around the camera equipment, you pretty much know what it's, what it's doing. You know, right. you get familiar with that stuff. And so th it wasn't something like that. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So there was um, uh, different times. I mean, at one point, like Tanya said, he came out. Uh, stood up and he, was, he kept saying something was burning his back and when he stood up he had a, uh, was it a scratch or upside down cross? Do you ever remember? It was a scratch and it went down and it curved around like that. Yeah. It's pretty hard to do, you right. know, do it to yourself. So what's the resolution with this? You investigated four times, you knew that there was activity, you certainly believed the, the, um, the things that were going on in the home. What do you do at that point to help them? We actually went in and done a blessing over the home. Uh, we didn't know if it would turn into an exorcism, basically not. A, you know, people think, well, how do you exorcise the home? Well, if it's a demon, you can't bless the demon. They have to be exorcised. And with my religion, it's basically called rebuking it in the name of Jesus. Is basically what we do. We go in and uh, pray over it with King James Version Bible. Uh, applying the blood of Jesus Christ about every sentence that we speak, firmly uh, demanding in Jesus' name to just go back to wherever it came from, to leave his family. Let me ask you this, is this something you do after an investigation after. or do you come back 
I mean, that same night, okay. or do you come back? We come back. It, we we try to do the uh, the blessings during the daylight because there's a whole new story on dark and light, and people that's kind of obvious. You know, dark is of dark, light is of the light, and when you have these spirits don't like the light. They don't want to go towards the light. The light, they'll, they'll hide from the light. So we go in during the day, and we tell everybody to open their blinds and pull the curtains back, cut all the lights on, and it helps. So we do it during the day. We come back, and there have been times that we've had no choice being out of town, somewhere as far away that we'd have to do it right then, but we prefer to do it another day. So are you with them on the blessings? Yes. Tony? So on this particular case uh, that the blessing was done, did that solve the issues or did you have to come back for another episode it, of that? It solved the issues and it, everything was great until she let uh, that girl back into her home and then it started up again and that's when she ended up with this tumor. Is that a recent occurrence? It was a year. So this case was in 2015. When did it go to Destination America a haunting? Was it 2016? 2016, wasn't it, Kelly? It was the last one we did. It was yeah. this year, early this year. It aired this year, but we did the interviews and so forth in 2016. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about the case that strikes out, uh, stands out in your mind? Just that this was one of the more, you know, because I've gone a lot of investigations. Yes. This is one of the, one of the cases that really stands out to me because it was, you know, it had a lot of violence in it, something that you don't come across during every investigation. Um, you know, you get people, oh, come investigate my house because I, I hear creaks in the floor or whatever, but this was way different. When it puts somebody in the hospital, mm -hmm. it's a pretty serious case, so that's and, what stands out. Right, and too, you put yourself in somebody else's shoes. What yeah. if that was your family, right. your mother, your brother, your grandmother, whoever, what if that was your family? And it really touches base with you because you'd want somebody to help them. Right My mother asked me one time, why do you do this? Why, why are you into this field? I don't understand this. I said, well, let me ask you something. I said, let me put you in a situation. I said, you know, this was about 11 at, night, 11 at night. It was real dark. And I said, cut all the lights off in the home. Leave the TV on. You're here alone. And out of nowhere, you start hearing the back bedroom doorknob jig. About that time, it turns, the door opens up, and you hear footsteps coming towards you. They're getting closer and closer. They're right on top of you. And then you hear something whisper into your ear, get out. I said, what are you going to do? She said, well, I'm going to call somebody to help. I said, well, we just happen to be those people that you would call. Some people are fit for this and some people are not. Correct. And that's a good place to end this uh, episode because, and if you need help or if you have some questions, want to interview, uh, talk to Rob or Tanya or Kathy or any part of the, the team, ptitn.com is the website. We can also be reached on social media that you'll see at the end of this video um, uh, series. So let us know, contact us. Again, thank you, Rob, Kathy, and Tanya for this, and we'll see you next time.